say that because I saw nobody. Well, there's people lining up now. What do you think, RJ? Should we take some? Take what, away, Regina. What's your name, dear? Hi, my name is Debbie. Hey, um, Debbie. I'm one of the table plants because I asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> so she, so she, no, no, I asked a question and she said she would answer it here, so I'm asking. Um, what made you interested in writing uh, the book about Grace of Home? What was it that prompted you to really take her on as a topic? Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, what's your name? Debbie. Debbie. Thank you, Debbie, for the question. Uh, I think I always knew who Grayson Hall was because I had an interest in theater. And like I said a little bit earlier, growing up in Russell, Kansas, you know, 5,000 miles from anything. Um, but I always read, read about the theater, and I saw that John Cat as a young girl, and always remember the, late, the kidnapped bank teller who scratched a help on the back of her watch. Because I'm just not that clever. I would never get myself out of a kidnap situation. No, so I always remember that lady and that actress and saw her in other things and remembered her. But I also had a, a friend who was interested in doing the voiceover work for Night of Dark Shadows and sent an audition tape to Derek Gross to do that. And uh, he's afraid of online community stuff and he said, can I stay in touch with what's happening with Dark Shadows? And so I joined a few of the forums and started watching it on Sci-Fi and got sucked in. <laughs> 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 And, and just, you know, remember seeing Night of the Iguana and a couple of other films. Just admired, uh, uh, a few people said that she was brilliant. She had a certain range, but within that range she was brilliant. And I uh, thought how wonderful she could go from the subtlety of Night of the Iguana and even that Satan High Hills clip to Mad, uh, who was larger than life. And uh, I just admired that. And I've always had an affinity for 40-year-old red-headed ladies. <laughs> so, it just naturally spoke to me. And what's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Will. Hello, Will. And uh, I understand that uh, Grayson was actually descended from Romanian gypsies. Is that true? Uh, my understanding is that um, Magda was um, patterned, it was a gift from Sam, the character, patterned after her grandmother, yes, who was given in marriage and traded for like an ox or something. <laughs> um, her family was from Moldova uh, on her father's side. So, yeah, a little bit of truth, a little bit of. <laughs> that. Um, there, there is a part in the book that talks about that. And uh, she had many, her father was one of like five children. Uh, and uh, it was that family on her father's side of the family. And uh, Cameron, I just wanted to say you did a very good impersonation, uh, interpretation of Grayson Hall in your uh, CD drama. Oh. I think uh, I think Grayson would have been pleased with it. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I'm like, can, can, you, can you do it? Oh, no, no. <laughs> they, they made me do it, so you... <laughs> He's saying it's crazy. She was such an exceptional person. She was such an unusual character by herself that... Um, I mean, oh, no, I won't do it. I'm just teasing. I'm By the way, uh, apropos of absolutely nothing, is um, Gary from Baltimore, Maryland here? Gary? Gary from Baltimore, Maryland. No? Stand up to be counted. All right. If you were, I thought I would embarrass you in front of everybody. You rang me at five minutes past three this morning. Oh, really? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. That's great. <laughs> Maybe he's gone back to Maryland. <laughs> I wasn't very polite. <laughs> All right. Remember that name, Gary from Baltimore. <laughs> You've crossed the line, Gary. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Uh, I'm James from North Hollywood, not Gary. That's, that's right. <laughs> I don't know you ever. Uh, you know, listening, to, I, I've been to these festivals before and reading all the great books that you have put out and everything. I've honestly gotten the sense that working with Grayson Hall for a lot of people was a little intimidating. And I'm wondering if you could elaborate on that, what the experience of working with her was like. Uh, Grayson had an edge. There, there was no question about that. I was not at all intimidated by Grayson. But there were cast members that, that were. Um, I, I think to my advantage, 
Um, I'd been on the very first day of the show, and, uh, and Gracie came on sometime later. So even though I was much younger, uh, you know, a bit of a neophyte, um, I'd been on the show. I was at all intimidated by her. But, but she could be intimidating. It was the combination of voice and mannerisms. And, uh, and if she was feeling snarky, she, <laughs> if she got snarky, that's all there is to it. Uh, others, others will certainly tell you that, but um, I found it terribly funny. As, as an example, I think one thing that I, I told you about, um, Grace and Love Food, and we always used to go up to the Grippe de Soie in the corner, and that was after the show, we'd have drinks, and some of us would stay on and have a meal, and, and so on. It was sort of our local watering hole. In any case, uh, Grayson and, and Sam uh, would often go up there, and um, and then uh, occasionally my boyfriend and I would go and have dinner with them. And Grayson would always go to these very strange places that were difficult to get to. We went to a Chinese restaurant one night, and uh, and there was no sign that it was a Chinese restaurant. Uh, in fact, there were curtains in the window, and we had to knock. And we went in, and we sat at a Formica table. And this man came out and looked like and he was, you know, for, nobody else was in the restaurant. And, um, uh, and it didn't even smell like Chinese food. <laughs> and, uh, but, but Grayson said, we'll be ordering off the menu. Well, there were no menus. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the, the man looked at her in a very surly way, and she ordered. And he walked away, and I was ready to leave, and, and, and Grayson said, oh, these inscrutable chinois. <laughs> I think it was a friend for a gambling joint. I think it was not a restaurant. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Hello, sir. What's your name? I'm uh, Brian Nelson from North Hollywood. See, everybody's local. This is great. <laughs> Ms. James, I have a question about your book and your research. What was the most uh, surprising thing that you found out about uh, Grayson during your research? Well, I uncovered the great mystery of when she was born. <laughs> because she was very secretive about her age. And uh, always the same day, September 18th. But she started lying about her age when she was 19 years old. She lied on her social security application. <laughs> she was 19 and she said she was 18. And then it just went on. And um, Matthew and Sam Hall didn't even know. Matthew Hall, after she passed away, tried to work with DMV to get the title of her car transferred. And he had this interaction where he kept giving a different year and a different year to the DMV worker. The DMV worker pushed aside the paperwork and said, I am not dealing with you. I don't know who you are. And uh, he was like, really? No, she was my mother. She was an actress. She lied about her age, that sort of thing. Um, but I, that was that, and I think the uh, sort of the mystery about her first marriage, uh, that was very interesting to hear about and to see that it really did um, change her, I think, quite fundamentally, uh, that marriage. 1922. So she was just shy of her 63rd birthday when she passed. That's too young when we talk. Look who we have here, John Carlin, to share some memories of Raising Heart. Oh, let me see. 
Um, you know, if, uh, I think Grayson and I were, uh, worked. Uh, did we work that much together? I, I don't her very first day was with you when you were kidnapped yeah. in her sanitarium. But I, I had trouble finding like scenes that I thought would be very reflective of your work. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I, re I remember when we were uh, when she was playing Magda, and I was in you know all of that hair um, and, and working with her. But she'd been on the show for a, for a while. When she came on, I have to say that she was um, uh, she was a little bit nervous. Uh, oddly enough, I, th I don't think she it was. It was this show or Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, you know, she uh, she was a little bit um, nervous, and, uh, and and I just found her delightful from from the very beginning. But I can't re really remember a single scene in particular that stood out. When you think of Grace, and when you remember, is there uh, is there like any? If you had one flash. Oh, you know, well, she had so many mannerisms. Watching her smoke, Mwah! you know. <laughs> Self-conscious about her freckles and pale skin, so uh, you know she she would uh, she would wear leg makeup <laughs> to work in the morning. You know anything she, she needed the fact that she had freckles. No, I love that story that you told me about how she was trying to criticize you for having false eyelashes on right. or something, and you said something about the leg makeup and Joan Bennett. Yes. Yeah. So you can tell I was not into it. <laughs> All right, and, and Mr. Carlin, did you have any particular memories of Grayson that were that stood out? Well, mostly what I just said at the beginning, but uh, Grayson was a, uh, you know, she had a lot of, you know, disregarding acting. She had charisma, great charisma, and uh, a great face, a great face. And uh, you had to watch what you said around Grayson because somebody else would also hear what you said somewhere down the line. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but that's fine, that's, that's good. It's hard to say any negativity about Grayson at all, it just is almost impossible, you know. She uh, had this great, wonderful apartment on 57th Street and uh, right across the street and seventh across the street from Carnegie Hall. But it was dark, dark in the apartment. It was all blocked off. There was no way to see light, which was somehow good. And uh, they had a rent control building. They were paying about uh, meaningless, meaningless money. Grayson Hall. Interesting, you know, I took a picture. I was gonna bring it down, I forgot, forgive me, of her and I coming out of the studio together. That picture of her almost tells it all. She was wearing dark glasses and she was bundled up and uh, went to time. Great lady. Yeah, she's great, Grayson. Just wonderful. Wonderful woman. Really different. Again, unique. Thank you. So we have time for two more questions. And look, there's two more people. <laughs> I'm not such, I'm a, I'm a huge uh, Dark Shadows fan now, but uh, originally my partner has been a fantastic fan. And we have a house that's very long, and the back is where the theater room is. And Grayson kind of brought me into Dark Shadows because I'd be in the front of the house and I'd hear the screaming. <laughs> and I, I was concerned what's going on. I'd kind of go through the neighborhood, what's going on, and finally in the back would be Grayson Hall screaming. So I would sit down. And I would meet this character who knew all the secrets, and everybody trusted Grayson Hall. And I'm curious about the trust, because all the secrets Grayson knew, she was always in on everything. What was it about Grayson that they, when they wrote the character and brought in that, that brought in this great trust of every, every secret being known by, by uh, Julia or Magda? That was a central character from that, my perspective. <laughs> no, I, nothing comes to mind. Are you saying, are, are you saying that, that um, as Julia or as Magda, or are you saying as an actor? Well, I, I mean in terms of, uh, it, it seems like a lot of times they're writing based on what the, the, the person, actor brings in. And Julia was a person, or Magda, 
where racism has sort of brought this great trust. You, you, you'd go in, I'd walk in the room and go, I really trust this person. Well, and and you would see that in the, uh, in the Dark Shadows episodes. Yeah, that's I guess she was like matronly, you know. I, I think she was like a, like a, because she was a I, I have, I've heard, had various of the people that cast on me that at various times she took sort of a maternal uh, Yeah, she, would, she did, uh, I, I didn't have that, um, that experience where we didn't have that kind of relationship. I, I think that there were uh, instances where when she did, maybe it was Nancy and, and, uh, and a few others. I will tell you one funny story. Um, uh, Sam and Grayson went off to Mexico. I think they went off to Acapulco. And they had these, um, these finch, these birds. They were finch. And I think they named them Lord and Lady Finch. Anyway, they were in this cage. And they needed somebody to look after them. So Grayson asked me if I would look after her finch. So she brought them to the studio. I took them all, but it was in the winter. And, um, and they died. <laughs> so uh, I told Bob Costello, the producer, that you know, they're gone for two weeks and the birds are dead. And he said, he said, uh, Lord and Lady Finch, why don't you just tell them that uh, one died in childbirth and the other was so distraught. Uh, and made, made up this whole Irish funny story that I was supposed to tell Grayson. And I just had to tell her finch for death. Why don't you just get two other birds and stick them in? You know, she wouldn't know. Oh, she All right. I know. I know exactly. Okay, we have time for one last question, sir. Uh, John, I just wanted to say that there are two uh, favorite scenes with the uh, Julia Hoffman and uh, Willie Loomis. One is where she's bawling him out for leaving Adam unattended. <laughs> I can imagine this uh, the kind of voice she used on her own son at some times. And uh, the other was the very tender scene between you, Willie, and uh, Julia when they were buried for Barnabas. Yes, sir. And I just wanted to say that was great acting there. Well, thank you very much. Thank Let's you. have a hand for this wonderful panel. Talking about a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. 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 you. Thank 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 you. Sister, thanks for it. I thank you. Enjoyed that panel. Did you enjoy that? Very good.